All right, thanks everybody for joining. We're doing another edition of Free Training Thursday, and this is uh, one of our most popular uh, topics. This is the Ask Us Anything version. Um, I have my, my colleague Amanda uh, on the line as well. She'll be fielding the questions today uh, and relaying those to me, and I'll do my best to answer as many as we can uh, in the time that we have allotted. Um, just a couple notes before we start. A lot of you sent in uh, questions via email beforehand. Thank you very much for doing that. We definitely appreciate it. I should have responded to most of them uh, via email. Um, if I didn't get you a response, it's possible that I sent you an email uh, saying that I would follow up with you uh, before the end of the week uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, because some of the questions were a little detailed and I didn't want to take up too much time uh, answering those questions on today's webinar because the answers were a little involved. Um, I do have a couple, though, that I did uh, keep for uh, today's session that we can discuss. Um, but as far as everything else, go ahead and use the question and chat box to type in uh, any questions that you have for me, and I'll do my best to get them uh, answered. So uh, before we dive into questions, uh, any uh, can you actually just acknowledge for me that you can see my Abacus Law program here? Just click the little hand raise button there on your on your perfect. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amanda. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put your hands down. There we go. Uh, and like I said, go ahead and use that um, use that chat box and question box for your uh, questions. Please note this is Abacus Law only. Okay, this is not billing. This is not accounting. We do have an Ask Us Anything for those uh, for that program uh, coming up on October 18th. So please uh, mark your calendars and uh, register for that. That'll be um, uh, next month. Um, we'll be able to ask anything, uh, you know, accounting or billing related. So um, let's see. Before we get into the questions in the chat boxes, um, I do want to uh, just address some of the ones that came in by email. Uh, one of them uh, had to do with fields inside of forms. Uh, and this is a this is a popular area for questions when it comes to form generation. Basically, what you do when you are creating a form is you are taking information from a matter and you are merging that into a form template, whether it be a court form or some sort of internal letter that you guys use, you know, every day. Um, the concept is the same. We're merging that data into the appropriate locations inside of our form, right? So for instance, if you look at this letter here that says client deposition appointment letter, I've got my basic text, basically the text that you know we're telling everybody, and then I've got my areas where I'm putting in matter-specific information. So the question was just basically clarification on the name fields inside of a form. So a name field would be something like client underscore address, like I'm highlighting here. The way these field names break down whenever you are designing or merging a form, I like to think out of it, uh, think of it as like a prefix, suffix kind of breakdown. The prefix where it says client, that is the link type, okay? That's the person linked to the matter as that link type. And then the second part of the field, the suffix, that is the data that's actually getting put into that section of our letter. So what the system does when you run a form is it looks at the first part and it says, okay, who's linked to this matter as client? And then once they find that person, they just grab that person's address and they put it into that area, okay? So for instance, file underscore attorney. It looks and sees who is assigned as the attorney on that file. Okay. So for like name fields and things like that, if you have, you know, maybe like a form that has, um, you know, defendant first name, defendant last name, what it's doing is, is it's going to the matter record, it's looking to see who is linked as defendant, and then whoever is, that's the information that's pulling into the form. Now, that kind of begs an additional question of what happens if we have multiple people with the same link type? Well. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have multiple people with the exact same link type. Although the system may allow you to do it in some situations, with the exception of the bill to, um, you should always have a differentiating, uh, you know, marker for each link type. So if you have multiple clients, it should be client one, client two, client three. If you have multiple defendants, defendant one, defendant two, defendant three. That way, the system will be able to identify 
you know, defendant one goes here, defendant two goes here, defendant three goes here. Okay. So the biggest thing to take away when it comes to fields inside of a form is the first part of that field name is the linked person to that matter. Okay. The second part is the data that actually gets merged into the form. All right. Now, one more question uh, here that got emailed in before we get into the uh, uh, questions that Amanda's going to read off. Uh, using the existing name button inside of an intake form. If you have ever done a training with me, you have probably heard me harp over and over on the use of intake forms. Anytime you are adding a new case to the system, you should always use an intake form. The reason we want to use our intake forms is because they allow for duplication checking. And that's one of the biggest questions that I get when it comes to new case creation. You know, how do we how do we make sure that somebody else hasn't already entered this case in? Well, if you're using the intake forms, the system's going to do that for you. So once you choose your intake form, you're going to see these little buttons across the right side. You've got use existing matter. You've got use existing name. Those are the only two. You may see use existing name multiple times, depending upon how many names that intake form accounts for. But the concept between these is exactly the same. If we think that a matter has already been entered, all I have to do is type in you know, something close to that matter. Notice I just typed in the word Smith. I hit use existing name, and it's going to check for possible duplicates. So it says right here, no duplicates found. Okay, So I can say no. For our names, it's even better. Actually, it does this the same way for matters as well. If you type in something exactly the same as what's in the system, so for instance, if I type in, oh, let's say John Doe, and I try and tab to the next field, it's going to duplicate, it, or it's going to check for duplication, and it's going to tell me this name already exists. Do I want to allow a new client with the same name? Now, you know, if our client's name is John Smith, there's a chance we might have 10 of them in our system, right? But this is our opportunity to just double check. So right here, I can say no, don't allow a client with the same name, and instead, use an existing name, and if I click this button, it will show me a list of possible duplicates for the name that I entered. So I click that button there, and then what that's going to do is open up my possible duplicates list. You can see I've got two here, John Doe and Johnny Doe. So I can look at this and I can just, you know, check out some personal info, like maybe the street address or the phone number or, you know, whatever it may be. Some identifiable characteristic of this person's data that, you know, tells me, oh, this is a person that we represented a few years ago. Let's just use their name record. So that way we don't duplicate uh, that person in our system. So that use existing name button is really handy because it'll save you some typing time, first off, and um, it prevents you from duplicating name records that are already in your program. Now, that's a big thing about Abacus. Abacus is uh, very matter-centric, so it's okay to have multiple matter records for the same person, but we obviously don't want to have multiple name records for the same person. That doesn't make any sense. So. So hopefully that answered those questions. Uh, those again, those are the ones that came in from uh, from the email um, system there. So um, I will turn it over to Amanda. Any questions uh, that you have, please chat those in the question box and in the chat box, and uh, I'll answer them the best I can. Amanda, all yours. All right, thank you, Scott. So our first question is: Can I do anything to automate signature line creation when a retainer form has multiple clients? Scott, I think you might be on mute. I am on mute. Thank you so much. Sorry about that, folks. Um, so what I was saying to myself, um, I think it all goes back to that same philosophy that I was talking about before. It's best to have, you know, client one, client two, client three inside of the form letter, so at those signature lines. But if, if there isn't somebody linked as client two, 
you know, to the matter, then um, it's, um, you know, it's not going to autofill that name anyway. So you don't really need to worry about it. So it's only going to fill, you know, what has been actually uh, linked to that matter. I hope that I hope that makes sense. All right, I'm just going to give it another minute here for some questions. As a reminder, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the sidebar right now. The next question is, the use existing name field is appearing in a form we are trying to tailor for our needs. It blanks out the connected fields and only allows one entry for the three. Is there a workaround? I'm not sure I'm following the question, so let me kind of, um, let me just explain what that field is for again. It's, it's really only there to find any potential duplicates of anybody that you named um, within that actual section of the intake form. So in other words, um, if, if there's a first name, last name field, and you hit that button for use existing name, um, it's only checking those two fields. So I, I'm maybe just jot down that person's email address, Amanda, and I'll follow up with them afterwards just so I can maybe get a better idea of what they're talking about. And then just so you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relaunch the screen sharing real quick. It looks like it just screws up on me. So give me just one sec. Absolutely. And I've noted that down. So Kristen, we have you covered. Okay, I think we're getting it back up there. Uh, let me know, Amanda, can you see that? Okay, is the screen back up there? Okay, uh, just by raise of hands real quick, can everybody just let me know that they can see the Abacus Law Program here? Okay, perfect, thank you, Andrea. Awesome, thank you, Amy. Um, okay, so uh, any other questions? And Amanda, I just want to make sure you're not on mute. Yes, I was. <laughs> uh, let's just give it one moment here. I'm going to wait for a few more questions to come through. And if we don't get uh, too many more coming through, what I can do, um, I, I, one of our clients was very kind to uh, forward us a document of quite a um, – a decent amount of questions on it that I think may be useful for other people. So um, I'm gonna just open up that uh, that Word doc and uh, maybe we'll use some of those just to uh, spark some people's uh, you know questions. Okay, so while we're waiting for people to think there, I'm going to go through just a couple questions here that I thought were um, I thought were pretty useful. Um, one of the questions was, can a matter be linked to a different matter? And this is something I've been asked before. The short answer is no, it really can't. Um, the only way I would see that somebody would want to do that is if the matter happened to be the same client for some reason, um, or maybe in some sort of divorce scenario where you're representing both, or maybe you're advising both clients, so you have separate matter records for each one. That would be the only way that I would find that useful. But really, because the program is so matter-centric, everything usually needs to be linked um, to other matters via the link names tab. So. If you're trying to see, you know, how many um, matters a particular client has, 
it's better to just go into that client's name record, open that up, and then from within there, you'll have the linked matters tab where you'll be able to see any matters that they're associated with. Any so, other questions? Um, yes, and our next question is in the matter docs tab, there is a folder marked uncategorized. I can't drag and drop multiple documents into that. Yes, no. So the uncategorized documents folder is where any document, or I should say file really, um, gets added if it hasn't been specifically nested into a different folder. So if you just, so for instance, watch, I'll show you. Oh, I'm not going to be able to. Let me uh, adjust my screen sharing to show my whole desktop here. There we go. So for instance, if I open up this folder on my desktop that says case docs, okay, and inside of this case docs folder, if I just drag this little PDF right here over into my docs tab and I release my mouse, I'm going to get this document details window. If I do not assign a level specifically putting this into some sort of subfolder, then it is automatically going to go into uncategorized documents. Okay? It automatically goes there. So this is kind of like the catch all location for any, you know, type of document. Ideally, what we want to do is when we link documents, is let me drag them and we get to this details window. You know, if this is, you know, documents about a deposition or maybe this is our pleading or something like that or even bills or something, you know, we want to create or utilize one of these levels here. Okay, maybe it's a court document. I just use that. And now, see how it adds another folder? And now that document is inside of that folder. So just keep in mind, you have to have this in folder view. Okay, there is different views here. Notice the button that says list view. If I click that, now I just have all my documents in a row rather than organized by folder. I don't really like that. I like the folder view. So click that folder view button, and that will give you your, uh, you know, nested folders. So Mary Beth would like to know, she doesn't want to drag and drop and put into a level subfolder. Um, then she has to drag and drop one at a time. She has multiple uh, terabytes of documents and she wants to be able to drag and drop multiple documents over into levels. Scott, I think you're on mute. So notice how I just clicked every one of these. See how I highlight all of them? And then I can drag multiple over, and it will ask me if I want to add these five files. So I can do that, okay? And it's going to automatically put them in there because I can't, it, it's not going to assume a certain level. So once they're in there, then I can go in and drag them into the appropriate folders. But you know, it, if you have terabytes of documents for a single matter that you're trying to put in to the system, my advice is to just link the folder back to that. Remember, you don't have to just link individual files. You can link whole folders to the, to the matter as well. Any other questions? Can the folder then be seen in court uh, when the attorney is out of the office? Was the question, can the folder be seen in court when the attorney is out of the office? That was the question? So question is, it's a two-parter. So can the folder be seen in court um, in regards to the, the folders that we were just talking about? Um, so, and then when the, when the attorney is out of the office, so I think, um, if the attorney mm -hmm. is remote, um, can, can the, board right, right. So, so.
so if you have Abacus Law installed on your local network, no. I mean, if you take your computer off the network, unless you have some sort of VPN access back to your network, um, if that's the case, then yes, um, you can. But if you're removing your, your machine from the network, um, no, you wouldn't be able to do that unless, of course, the documents were saved, the documents that you linked were saved on that, you know, local laptop. The alternative is uh, if you're using our our Abacus private cloud, then then yes, you, you would be able to view them from anywhere, anywhere with an internet connection, I should say. So I believe it is um, an Abacus private cloud situation because um, the attorney has Abacus on his tablet. So she wants to be sure that yep. he can see the documents in the folder in court. Absolutely. So if, you, if you're on the Abacus private cloud, you can see your documents anywhere. And I just want to confirm this. Uh, she asked, even if they're in a folder, they can be seen? Absolutely, because if you're on the private cloud, all your working documents should also be stored on your private cloud. So that's that's the whole purpose of having the private cloud. It's so you can go anywhere, and as long as you have an internet connection in court, which nowadays most do, you know, they have Wi-Fi nowadays, um, yeah, that, absolutely, because, I mean, you're basically operating your Abacus Law program in the exact same environment that those folders and that those documents live in. So as long as you're utilizing your Abacus private cloud the way it was designed to be utilized, then you can view those documents and folders from, from anywhere. All right, great. Thank you so much, Scott. Our next question is, how can I properly categorize and later rearrange new forms into different folders? So again, it kind of just goes back to that drag and drop feature inside of our matters. So if we if we're in here, you know, I have these three different subfolders, right? Uncategorized, depot, and court. I can move these at any time. All I have to do is just edit this. Okay, notice I just highlighted it, clicked edit, and I can add this, I can add up to three levels. Okay, so I can just go choose my depot level, okay, and that will, you know, embed it into that area. These are customizable levels as well. So I know it says level there, but think of these as folders. It really probably should say folder, but it's the same thing. So if I wanted to have, you know, a secondary, uh, you know, a subfolder underneath depot, I can do that too. You know, I can just click add up here and give it, you know, some new sort of document type or folder type code, you know, depot one, depot two, whatever it may be. Depot prep, you know, maybe something like that. Okay, and now I have that folder that I can choose. So I can have, you know, level one as depot, level two as depot prep. Okay, and now I click done, and there you go. So I've got my main depot folder. Now I have my depot prep folder here. And see, now I have that document in there as well. So, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can set this up. My suggestion is to actually create you know, effective, useful levels for your firm um, and just make sure that people are being diligent about putting them in the right folders. That's the key. If you're not putting them in the right folders, then, I mean, you know, you're, you're not doing much for your organization. Can you drag and drop multiple documents into a level? If you're dragging multiple documents, it's automatically going to put it into uncategorized. And then at that point, you actually have to adjust it uh, by just clicking edit and then putting them into the appropriate level. I believe that's something that they're updating though, so that you can be able to do it um, all in one fell swoop. The reason it doesn't work like that now is because that document details window that we see um, here, we can't have multiple of these open at one time. And I think that's being changed though. All 
All right, any other questions? And while we're thinking on these last couple minutes here, don't forget you have uh, you know you have help right here in the program when you have a question. Anytime you have the program open, if you hit the F1 key on your keyboard, that will open up your help uh, knowledge base where you can search for different uh, content. We also under the help menu here have direct links to our videos, to our knowledge base, uh, tech support if you're having any technical issues. And then, of course, under additional help, we have our reference guides. So these reference guides are all searchable. So I always say check the reference guide first. If you have a question about calendar rules, you know, open up that reference guide and search rules. And you'll probably find what you're looking for. All right. So our next question is, can you link emails to a defendant that has multiple cases? Can they be linked at the same time? So they're gonna, they can link to the defendant's name record, but they're not going to link to multiple matter records. You can only link an email to one matter record at a time. If you attempt to go back and link that email to a, a different matter, you're actually going to get a message that tells you that the, the email has already been linked and it's going to ask you if you want to change the link. So the workaround for that is to, you know, if you're dying to do this, to link it to multiple matters, um, then you need to forward it to yourself and link the forward. But if you're linking it to the defendant's name record, um, you have an opportunity to, you know, put a note in there about what that email is regarding. So, I mean, linking it to the defendant's record, name record, should be enough. All right, our next question is about the Abacus Law mobile app. Any idea when the updated version will be available? I have absolutely no idea, um, but I can, uh, if you jot down that person's email address, I will uh, ping uh, development and see if they can give me a, an ETA on that. Yes, absolutely. So, James, we will get that answer to you shortly. We have just two minutes left here in our webinar, so if you have any questions, please get those in to us as soon as possible. So our next question is related to the question regarding multiple cases and linking at the same time. Can that be done with forms as well as documents? Absolutely. So when you're running a form, you should have the save and log option. If it's a word form, you should have the save and log option and you can choose the matter that you want to, you know, link that form to once it's completed. So I'm sure you've seen in Word. Um, how you have um, here? We'll just we'll actually look at one real quick. So inside of Word, you have, and I'm sure everybody's seen this before. You have an option that says Save. You have an option that says Save As. And then if you have the Abacus add-in installed, you'll have a third option that says Save and Log to Abacus. Now, I don't think I have it in here, but I just want to give you a visual of where you would see it. So you have save here, you have save as, and then under options, you would have something that says save and log to Abacus. And if you click that, then it allows you to choose the matter that you want to link that to. And then it's basically, you know, just a matter of, you know, editing those details just like you normally would 
when you link um, any document, whether it's drag and drop or by clicking the add button. You get that same document details window and you get to choose, you know, which, um, you know, which level you want to apply that document to. All right, that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much, Scott, for leading this webinar. Um, as a reminder, this webinar will be available on our website at abacusnext.com forward slash webinars, as well as forward slash blog. We'll also be sending a copy to all attendees and registrants to their inbox. Thank you and have a great day.